a redo anyway. <laughs> I'm Kelly McFarland, and I'm the co-owner of Egoski Portland with my husband, Marlon. And we have been here in this location for over 20 years now. Um, and I think, you know, my journey started um, with my own neck pain um, when I was a personal trainer um, 20 plus years ago. Um, I had a lot of neck pain due to um, well, my posture photo showed me it was bad posture from um, the activities that I had been doing in college, studying a lot. I had been an athlete earlier in my life and then went really inactive and then was over studying, over sitting, overworking and just got myself into, and I had a, um, a skiing accident where I kind of wrenched my neck back and um, never really knew what to do or didn't even do anything about it. Didn't even know it was really related until later on in life. Um, and then I started doing a gauze cue, got myself out of neck pain, and then started treating all of my personal training clients with a gauze cue because I kind of felt like, oh, an irresponsible personal trainer. How could I be training people for 5Ks and marathons and all kinds of things in life when their posture looked like mine did and they were in pain while they were training? And I thought, oh my gosh, we've got to start from, you know, the basics and build up and get these people in better alignment so that they can, you know, be um, set up for doing the things that they want to do in their life. Um, and so then I shifted my whole focus out, out of personal training into um, a Goscu specific therapy, exercise therapy, and have happily been there for 20 years. And um, I'm just so grateful to be here with all of you today, sharing this amazing tool that has helped me in my life be functional and, um, you know, pain-free and have no limits um, so I can live my life with my family and my kids and, um, you know, not have to worry about anything. So I'm grateful to have you all here today. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. I, uh, <clears throat> my Egoscu journey kind of started actually with Kelly and Martin as well. Um, I learned about Egoscu before that. Uh, I was living in Utah and going to school there uh, for exercise sciences. I I was also a personal trainer, um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do after I graduated and, you know, looked into physical therapy and um, I knew I wanted to do something with, um, you know, exercise and the human body always really fascinated me. But um, I learned about the Egoski method from a professor of mine. Um, luckily, I did because um, not only was I able to use it to help my clients, but I started having shoulder um issues as well. I played a lot of racquetball in college. And so, um, you know, starting to deal with some shoulder stuff, some tennis elbow, um, my back, you know, would bother me sometimes. So, and, you know, I thought I was young and invincible, right? So I didn't want to be limited by <laughs> pain already. So, so um, I, similar to Kelly, I, when I first saw my posture photos, it was really eye opening, just, um, and it made sense. Like, I was before it was easy to just blame the racquetball, blame, blame the sport or the activity, say, oh, that's what's hurting my shoulder. But really, our bodies are fully capable of playing racquetball or doing anything really. But um, it's just when they're not balanced and aligned and, you know, the joints aren't in the position and doing the things that they're supposed to do, that's when these activities start to hurt us or our bodies start to give us warning signals. So that really resonated with me. And so I decided to get certified um, as an Egoski therapist. I got a job working with Kelly and Martin in Portland. I was there for a little bit. And then seven years ago, moved to Seattle to open up my own uh, clinic here. So I've been in Seattle since then. And I also have two little kids and that keeps me busy. And I don't play racquetball so much anymore, but I've um, converted to pickleball. So if anybody is also a pickleball fan, I'd be happy to chat with you or play with you if you're in town. So, <laughs> but, um, okay, so we're gonna, let me share my screen so you guys can see the slides. Okay. All right. So uh, today we're talking about shoulders, but it's okay if you don't have shoulder pain at the moment, and this will still be beneficial as we kind of, the whole body's connected. And so, um, but talking specifically about shoulder pain, just to kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Looking at this list, we've got, I just listed some of the most common 
conditions or um, diagnoses that uh, people come to us for. Um, does anybody see anything on that list that, that they either have or have had in the past? Arthritis, rotator cuff, yeah, Larry. Can you define labrum tear? Yeah, labrum tear, that's, um, so it's like, the labrum is kind of like, a, it's, it's a connective tissue in the shoulder socket. So if you think of the shoulder as like a, a ball and socket, similar to the hip. Um, so you have the, the arm bone, the uh, humerus there sitting in the joint and the labrum kind of is like a capsule that basically holds, holds that ball in place, you know, it kind of surrounds the, um, surrounds the, the spot where the head of the uh, humerus sits there. So, so that can tear um, or get worn out and then cause, cause issues. So, yeah. Anybody? So go to YouTube, or YouTube or Google it and look at the picture of that okay. uh, structure and what that looks like. Yeah. So is anybody, um, anybody dealing with any of these things at the moment? You can go to your reactions and just like do a thumbs up if um, you're dealing with any of these issues today. We got some people, uh, rotator cuff and labrum tear surgery, September, oh, last year, okay. Mm -hmm. Something going on in my right shoulder, limited mobility. Yeah, so sometimes there's not any specific diagnosis, you know, and that's okay too. That's pretty common where there's pain or limited motion and you, know, you don't really know why, so. Um, Hopefully after today you'll have some have some ideas of why, and that's ultimately what we're trying to get at. You know these these conditions are um, you know things that people come to us for, but really we're not treating the diagnosis; rather we're treating the cause. You know, so we we don't care as much of what the exact diagnosis is. It's important, you know, because it's it's describing what what is going on, but we care more about why and the how. Um, so that's where we look at. Um, your posture. And so the way we view pain is a little different than maybe most um, of Western medicine, at least, but it's it's really just a signal. It's a warning sign. I like to think of it like the check engine light on your car. It doesn't necessarily mean anything's broken. I mean, it could be, but um, usually it's just an early warning sign that, hey, something's not doing what it's supposed to. You're not, you know, uh, something triggered this this check engine light. So we need to investigate further and figure out what caused it and fix that if we want the light to turn off, right? So rather than just turning the light off or covering it up, ignoring it, you know, like taking a pain pill or pushing through the pain, you know, eventually it's going to get worse. You know, if we ignore that check engine light, then something worse could happen down the road, um, you know, something catastrophic. So um, that's kind of the way we, we look at it. Um, so it's nothing to be feared. Um, it's something that we just need to understand more. Um, so we've got some people in the chat saying arthritis, impingement, yeah, bursitis, labrum tear. Yeah, all kinds of fun stuff. So hey, I've dealt with my fair share of shoulder stuff. You know, I mentioned the racquetball. Um, I separated my AC joint a couple, I guess two years ago now. Um, my left side so that was fun <laughs> not really but um and you know playing pickleball now I, if i'm not really diligent with my exercises and keeping my posture in check i can i can definitely feel it um so it's something that you know i'm really glad i have this egoski method to to be able to understand you know my pain and, and what to do about it and and prevent further problems so so really um, looking at the why, um, it, pretty simple. You know, our approach is looking at the posture and the alignment. And obviously this house doesn't look very stable. It doesn't look like it's um, in very good shape. And, and yet a lot of us, if you look in the mirror, or we're gonna look at some examples here um, in a minute, but um, we kind of look like this house, right? <laughs> uh, you think of those, um, the load bearing um, walls are, are not straight. And so as a result, it's, you know, about to fall over and our body is no different. We've got load bearing joints um, and they should stack up straight and we want to be stable and we want our body to be able to move properly. Um, so that's the difference, I guess, between us and the house is we're designed to move around and maintain this integrity, whereas a house 
hopefully it doesn't move too much, right? So, um, so our bodies are designed to move, um, and ultimately that's if we talk about well, what's really the cause of this posture issue? You know, if we have posture problems, is it genetic? Is it uh, just you know our lifestyle? And it's I mean, for the most part, it's lifestyle, honestly. I mean, you can, you know, sometimes people have accidents or have birth defects or other conditions that affect things. But for the most part, our day-to-day you know, -day problems can be traced back to our lack of using our body the way it was designed to, which is basically uh, moving, getting lots of good movement, meaning variety of movement. You may go to the gym and um, or have a sport that you play and which is great, but um, if you think about how much time you're spending not moving versus moving, it's probably much more uh, time spent not moving. And so, um, so that's what where the exercises come in is what we use exercises and stretches to kind of supplement that, get your body um, moving again the way it's supposed to. And that's because our joints are you know held in place, or the way we're standing, or the way we're moving is controlled by muscles, right? So um, we can change our muscles at any age. So, so just kind of in summary here, if we want to eliminate the pain, if we want to turn off that check engine light, um, you know, pain pills necessary sometimes, but they don't really fix the problem, right? They're just masking the symptom. Um, Surgery is sometimes necessary, of course, you know, if there's some you know, significant damage done or something. Um, that needs to be fixed. That's we're not necessarily anti-surgery um, has its place, but once again, we just have to make sure we're correcting the underlying cause of maybe why that joint wore out or why that muscle tore in the first place. And if it's caused by your posture, we got to make sure we change that. You know, resting or in, you know sitting on a beach can actually be very therapeutic, <laughs> but most of us can't just spend our lives on the beach all the time, <laughs> so. Um, or this, like this sad guy on the bottom here, just giving up things that we love. You know, I could have just stopped playing racquetball if it hurt and I would probably have felt better at least for a while. Um, but, uh, it's not really a fun, nice way to live, go through your life is just giving up the things that you love just because they hurt. Uh, we'd rather fix the reason why they hurt so we can do those things. Right. Um, Okay. Do we have any questions that have come up? Uh, looks like Kelly's been answering them. Yeah, Great. and uh, people are asking questions going right along with the slides too. Um, you know, I think the one that stood out was like, well, what about chronic pain? You know, that's been there for a long time. Well, you just have to really look at your, you know, your lifestyle and your habits and your activity levels that um, consistently support the posture that your body is carrying with you every day day in and day out, right? Um, and then um, that can give you clues into um, what things need to shift in your day-to-day -day habits and schedule um, to start to shift that posture and add in stimulus like Agostio to help. Yeah, yeah speaking of that, uh, Kelly, why don't you tell us oh, yeah. what, what posture, what that really means, what are we looking for here? Great segue, yeah. Um, I think like first and foremost, when I think of shoulder pain, um, I just think about how, well, one, how amazing our body is as a movement machine and how everything is so intricately placed in there in all of our joint spaces. Right. But if we think about it, there's really not a lot of movement in there. Um, there's not a lot of space for movement <laughs> has to be really on the mark in order for there to be optimal function and movement. Right. So there's room for error, but not a lot of room for error for long periods of time, definitely not years on end um, or decades, right? Untreated, okay? And so um, that's where, you know, we were talking about, oh, well, that labrum tear and things like wear and tear. Well, yeah, a normal body gets wear and tear um, and your body goes through changes over time because it doesn't do the same thing every day all the time, right? You're doing different things on Monday that you did on Friday. But your overall life in general, you have habits and you have lifestyles, you have activities that create the posture that you're carrying with you right here, right now. So, you know, we like to show these balanced um, posture photos 
not because it's like everyone should look like this. And um, to be honest, I don't know that I've ever met anyone who looks like this. And the, the point is you don't have to look perfect in order to be pain-free. You just need to have more alignment so that your body and your muscles can work more functionally together as a unit. Um, and so we use this as a tool to show, okay, well, this is, you know, how the body is originally designed with the head um, centered over the pelvis, over feet that point straight ahead that are equally hip distance apart. And that shoulders are level, pelvis is level, knees point straight ahead, feet point straight ahead, your arms lay at your sides with the thumb and the side of the pointer finger showing from the front view, right? Um, a functional body in this position can do anything. Run, jump, pop, skip, you know, all the things, which most of us don't even do anymore, right? Our lifestyle has gotten so sedentary since the technological boom, right? So um, a lot of us have lost our balanced position, our balanced S-curve of our spine, and our eight load-bearing joints have gotten out of alignment, and they kind of work independently of each other. They don't work as a unit anymore. And when that happens, you know, right side's doing something different than the left side. Um, and it causes imbalances, it causes muscular compensations. And then that's when the check engine light goes off and it says, hey, listen to me, listen to me. I'm over here and you know, there's a breakdown and I need you to listen and I need you to address the situation, right? Um, and it's so good to have these photos, these balance posture photos to say, okay, I'm looking at this side view and you know, ear, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle, spine has a nice S curve, um, pelvis is level, shoulders are down, and, you know, away from the ears, the elbow and the wrist lay on that line, the ankle bone. Um, and when you're looking at your posture and comparing to these two photos, the front and the side view, um, it gives you clues and insight into, okay, how has my lifestyle, how have my activity levels and habits created the posture that I'm carrying right here, right now. Um, and if we have those shoulder positions that are rounded forward or rotated or elevated towards our ears, maybe even on one side, not the other, right? We have those muscular imbalances, um, then that joint space gets really compromised. And then we have rubbing and tearing and, you know, grinding and all kinds of wear and tear in that, that shoulder area. So um, Zach, did you want to talk about those two slides? That's perfect segue for those two. I don't know if you had specific stuff to say about that. <laughs> uh, this is just, we won't go into a ton of depth about the anatomy, but just so you guys can see, this is with all the muscles stripped away, just the, the kind of the three bones that make up the shoulder joint. This is your arm, your scapula, or your uh, shoulder blade, and then clavicle, or your collarbone, right? So you can see, I mean, there's it's a pretty intricate joint, and then you've got the rotator cuff, which is a group of these four muscles, um, and they all kind of help to move um, the shoulder joint, but also um, stabilize and kind of hold it in place. So you can see how with these the way these bones are um, kind of lined up and where those muscles run, that it's it would be really easy to you know pinch or. Uh, or uh, you know, restrict the motion of those muscles if the shoulder's not where it's supposed to. Like imagine if we were to you know, lift this shoulder up, for example, um, what that would do to the joint space here. Or maybe if we were to roll it forward, what happens to that? So you can see how these position of the shoulder is really important in, in uh, the proper function. And if you're out of position, it's going to just be more likely to, to cause impingements or you know, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> joint or the muscles uh, or the, the um, you know, the labrum, which is, uh, it's not in the picture, but it kind of wraps around the ball here. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say about that. So, so we'll show some examples of uh, typical posture problems that can cause shoulder pain. Um, and there's probably more. We just, I just chose kind of the most common ones. Um, so on the left there, we've got an elevated shoulder and or hip, and they usually go together. So you can see these horizontal lines show that his left shoulder is up higher than his right. Down at the pelvis, his right hip is higher than his left. So it's like this whole side, the right side is kind of compressed or scrunched up. 
and then his left side is almost like elongated. So um, and the shoulders and hips work together. You know, think about when you're walking or running as your right leg swings forward, your left arm should swing forward with it. Then the opposite happens when you move the other leg. So they kind of counterbalance each other, which is why typically when some problem happens in the hip where it causes it to be out of alignment, elevated, usually the shoulders will respond or vice versa. It can go both ways. You could have a shoulder problem and then your hips will adjust or compensate for that as well. So this is why when treating shoulder pain, we have to look at the whole body because it, it could be your shoulder problem could be coming from, you know, below um, at the pelvis or even all the way down to your foot. So uh, I was going to say arm swing is just a really great way to like take a look at what's ha what's happening or not happening in your shoulder. Um, like when you're walking, if you just pay attention to whether you're how your arms are swinging, are they going from front to back equal distance? Are you just bending at the elbow when you walk? Does your arm cross the midline when you walk? Um, those are all really good um, indications that your shoulders are out of position, out of alignment, and that you're using compensating muscles when you're walking. Um, and therefore, your balance cannot be um, in alignment, cannot be as good as it could be. Um, because your arms are counterbalancing your legs. So there's a pattern going on um, between your arms and legs at all times. Um, and if that's off, it's going to throw everything off. So if you're experiencing balance issues and you have shoulder pain, now you kind of might have a little bit of insight into why. Oh. Um, rounded shoulders, that's a pretty common problem. And there's a couple ways of looking at it. One is from the front look at her hands and see how, now we can see pretty much all of her knuckles, right? Remember Kelly said we should only see the thumb and first finger from the front view because our hands should rest at our sides. Well, when the shoulders round or they, they kind of twist inward and the shoulders come forward, then the hands end up typically resting more in front of your body and palms down so that you see the backs of the hands. So that's an easy way to just, you know, go stand relaxed in front of a mirror and look at your hands and see, see how many fingers or knuckles you can see. <laughs> That's kind of a basic indication of how rounded your shoulders are. You can also see it from the side uh, here, how, you know, there's, when the shoulders come forward, it exposes this part of the back. So we see more of her back behind the arm. You know, if you see the shoulders in a, in a good posture, you'll see um, very little of this, you know, the arms would be further back and covering this up basically, so. A um, couple other things. This is also very common to have the head forward. Um, thoracic flexion, meaning this is your thoracic back or spine is kind of this upper part of your back being flexed or rounded forward. You think once again, back to, um, let's go back to here. I don't have a side view, but the, the, your shoulder blades, they kind of rest. They're not really directly attached. They kind of float on the back of your, um, your ribs on your back. So when you change the curve of your back, if you're rounded forward, those shoulder blades now are in a different position. They're not able to move properly. They're kind of, they get kind of stuck. And then that affects your ability to, to move your arm and shoulder too. So, so thoracic back is a huge part of most people's shoulder pain. Um, and then the sway back, this example on the right, this is a, a good example. Notice how her hips, like the center of her hip is in front of this white line. That white line starts at the ankle. So that's where her hip joint should be, but you can see how forward it is. So the hips are forward and her back is almost like overextended now, right? To compensate for that. So she's actually sitting behind the line and then her head's in front of the line. So it's this whole zigzag pattern. <laughs> um, so this she's is- She's applying gravity already. Yeah, right. It's just your body is trying to figure out how to maintain balance when there's, when something's not in, proper position, it has to adjust. So uh, this is where we have to address the whole body, specifically the hips, um, because just looking at her shoulder or her, her neck position isn't enough. We have got to address the reason why it's out of position, which is, you know, coming from down here. 
So that makes sense. We just added a bunch of strength exercises for her shoulders, but we didn't get her pelvis underneath her. She could end up with more shoulder pain and or a tear. And she could end up with, if she didn't have neck pain already, she could end up with neck pain or even more low back pain in this position. If we added a bunch of strength and demand onto the alignment of this body that um, is not there, we would be putting the demand level higher than what her body can actually handle. And then what happens is the body says, oh, that's too much stress on a system that can't handle that much demand. And so AKA pain, then we get pain. Yeah. How many have you have had this experience where you go, you have shoulder pain, you go to the physical therapist or the doctor and they give you, you know, the rotator cuff strengthening exercises, right? With the bands where you're kind of pulling out and in and up and down. Great idea, right? It would strengthen the shoulder joint, you know, get those muscles supporting it better. But I mean, it's, it's not really going to do you a whole lot, not going to do this person a whole lot of good, right? Until we change, change the position of the shoulder and the hips, right? So like Kelly said, we're just strengthening an area that's already under too much stress because it's, in a, it's, yeah, it's not being supported by your hips and, you know, everything else. So that's where a lot of people um, come to us and ask, well, what's the difference between Egoscu and physical therapy? It sounds like the same thing. Well, generally speaking, there's a lot of good physical therapists out there um, and a lot that see the body in a holistic way, but just generally speaking, they tend to focus on where, where it hurts, right? Where the symptom is and they just treat that. Um, but then they often miss the, miss some of these other underlying causes, um, you know, by looking at the whole body. So that's what, uh, that what we try to do is by looking at the entire posture. And that's what makes it generally more effective long-term, right. Than just uh, focusing on where, where it hurts. And okay. people might be going to the gym too, with that posture and thinking, oh, I just need to strengthen. I just need to work out. I just need to get stronger. You know, I hear that. I just, I want to get stronger. I feel weak. Well, remember when you have a posture like this um, and you're compromised um, and you're compensating at su such a high level here, you actually can't gain strength. You cannot build strength on top of um, alignment that is not there because you actually can't utilize um, your muscles to the fullest, to, you know, the most functional that they can be in this, in this posture position, you need more right angles and straight lines. You need more alignment in the body before you can get into those deep core posture muscles. And when I say core muscles, I, I mean, shoulder blade, girdle muscles, torso muscles, and the deep core pelvic muscles, that's your core. And if those are not in alignment and balanced and working as a unit, then, you know, the arms and legs are just all over the place. <laughs> So <clears throat> I think we've talked enough here. So we're time for some audience interaction. <laughs> so uh, here's an example of a real client, first photos at least, um, with some lines there to help us see. But uh, I want you guys to chime in, either unmute yourself and say something that you see here or just write it in the chat. But uh, what, can we, what can we assess here um, about his posture that looks off or unbalanced? He's off, but in a different way than the lady earlier in the photos. His left shoulder is higher than his right, just like mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good to see things that we can relate to, right? Yes. So we know there's hope. I'm not the only one. <laughs> his ear doesn't align with his ankle. Mm -hmm. shoulder, his shoulder and his head needs to be back. Yeah. Dang. And I'm just waiting for him to take off of the ski jump. You know, he's like... <laughs> hanging that's, the, that's like, probably oh. me <laughs> I don't know well and we can maybe we can guess too like where his weight distribution in his feet might be like do you think he's all of his weights on his toes like hanging off that edge or is do you think it's way back on his heels I would I would guess toes, toes uh, yeah. yeah good what else it's also misaligned um, laterally. Uh, the line go, his um, right side of his upper body is too far to the right. Mm -hmm. His left, yeah. Or, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. yes, exactly, his left, right. 
correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So we had right to... and right and left is always complicated. <laughs> yeah, we put the line there um, at the midpoint at the bottom, right on the base between his feet, and in theory, that should be the middle point all the way up. But we can see even by the time we get to his knees, they're not they're not centered anymore, right? So his whole body is shifting to his left side for some reason. So. Well, his hips aren't even either. Yeah, right. So you can good kind of catch there. Right. Good eye, Cindy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a harder one to see. Good. So someone had mentioned uh, the head being forward and the shoulders forward. So does that? What do you think if we were to just give him some neck exercises to pull his head back? Does that make sense, or do we? What What else is going on in his body? You need to pull his. Yeah. posture back not just his head he's <clears throat> leaning forward yeah right so there's just an imbalance front to back you know the, so his he's leaning forward um not just his head but all the way all the way down so uh, those muscles in his legs and his hips and his his back need to be doing what they're supposed to to so that he stacks more vertically right so yeah and he's he's a fit guy he works out you can tell you know um, and, and the workouts that he's doing, he's going to hit a plateau. He's going to hit a sticking point because of the pain and the posture, right? The pain is going to be the signal, but the posture is what's driving the signal of the pain. And then he just, he just won't be able to train as hard or, you know, do the exercises he wants to do when he's working out total body, because he'll be stuck due to some sort of pain related to his posture. I mean, you can even see in his neck, how his neck muscles are really right. tight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot of work to hold your head yeah. up. <laughs> that, that bowling ball, that six to eight pounds right on top, it sits on top of all the other eight joints. And if it's not in a right alignment, man, that's a lot of weight to be carrying outside of alignment, right? Your body has to expend a lot of energy. It has to work really hard. It's fatiguing. It's tiring. Like those muscles, the little muscles that are doing the job of the bigger muscles, they get tired and fatigued and burn out. Um, so that's what some of you might be feeling too. It's just like, oh man, it's so sore. It's so tired. It's so hot. It's so all the things achy. Well, yes, it is under constant strain all day long, trying to hold you in a posture that is not um, conducive to that muscle position and that posture so here's the after effect um so what's what's different besides his outfit <laughs> how do you put a shirt on he's aligned <laughs> in the right picture he's his ankle goes up his body up to his ear so he's in much better yeah i mean his ear wasn't even his head wasn't even barely touching no yeah it wasn't wow back quite a bit so that's oh, neck muscles relaxed oh wow yeah. neck muscle looks so different now mm -hmm. if he didn't have tmj um i'd be surprised with that wow yeah yeah and then how's the front view but that's i think good. it's pretty interesting that his shoulder uh almost look overcorrected uh the shoulder is almost too far back slightly shouldn't it be in the middle of the shoulder yeah so he would have lots of a problem but yeah yeah so there's still a little bit of that uh sway back or you know excessive um maybe some lower doses in his low back so it's bringing his shoulders behind the line slightly so his ear lines up but the shoulder is you know, just a little bit farther back it's not it's not the shoulder itself that's the problem i think that's more a function of his spinal curve you know still a lot his of the anterior pelvis position needs to tip a little more neutral yeah. and align with the shoulders better yeah, yeah so he's still oh. oh can i have a, ask a question yeah. sure. how long approximately did it take him to get into this position um this i don't remember the exact timeline but i am Pretty confident it was a matter of um, a couple months, you know, maybe two to three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should sense. go into his file and look at his dates. Yeah, for this. I, could, I could probably look yeah. it up. But, um, um, typically, people um, they see and feel results in their posture photos in the very first session. 
Um, and that typically people have four to six visits is like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm really starting to feel the difference. I'm seeing the changes in my functional ability and in my daily life, four to six visits. Wow. If you're really, was, really chronic yeah. and you've had pain for a really long time, um, you're still going to see the changes. It just might be a little longer for the chronic stuff, depending on how long it's been there and what your situation is. Okay. I was supposed to come, is today the 20th? I was supposed to come up today, I think, with Jim and Paula, but something had to change and a date. Maybe it was the 19th. I don't know. I'm going in having a procedure done tonight. Um, well, testing. It's my road. They say it's my rotator cuff, but I don't know what it is. Um, well, it's always good to get information. I'm a big proponent of being the expert in your <clears throat> own personal situation. So gather all the data, gather, gather all the information, know everything that you know, need to know about your own personal situation. That way you can have peace of mind and you can create a plan going forward that fits you and works for you and that you're in alignment with because you're the expert, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm. So we'll show a couple other examples here real quick. <clears throat> um, you know, just to see the different changes that can happen. You know, this guy is obviously pretty crooked <laughs> at the beginning. He was having some back issues. Um, maybe some of you can relate to that where you just can't even stand up straight when your back is really locked up and things. And so sometimes the pain can create, you know, additional postural issues, right? You know, you have the underlying issue and then when you're in pain, you kind of compensate for that and maybe avoid it. So you get in funny positions, uh, which causes even more problems, right? It's this cascading effect, right? So we got to break the patterns um, like this guy did. Um, uh, just showing some uh, different ages, you know, as we really work with all, all kinds of different people and all different ages. It's never really too late or too early to start, you know? This guy was pretty young and in good shape, but, uh, also like the, the first guy, kind of uh, um, out of alignment there from the side view, out of balance and just a lot of tightness in his muscles. He was working out a lot, but just kept having shoulder pain and, and wrist and, and elbow problems because shoulders you can see are, are completely in front of that line and really caved in. Um, and his, his whole body is leaning forward as well. So um neck angle you know you can look at his neck was almost hyper extended because it's jutting forward so far um and then this lady was um also actually pretty active she was a hiker um photographer she would go on hikes and uh, take photos for her blog which i thought was really cool for a 70 something year old um but she was having pain as well and starting to limit her and what she was able to do until she started um you know improving her um, alignment. And what I like about this is it just shows how posture um, not only is important for how you feel, but it also just looks better, right? Like she just looks younger and like has more energy here than she did here, right? Um, so I like that. But... And that age really doesn't matter, you know, age right. is not the factor here, right? Like, because if you have shoulder pain on one side or even just shoulder pain on both sides, it doesn't matter. Those joints are the same age as all the other joints in your body. So if you're having one-sided pain or even double-sided pain in like any of the load-bearing joints in your body, um, you know, but not anywhere else, then, hey, like there's something going on in the system. There's an imbalance. So it can be addressed. Um, it doesn't have to be an age thing. There's a lot of people your age, your height, your, you know, activity level who don't have pain. Um, and well, why is that? You know, what are they doing different? Yeah. So, okay. So now we're going to do, uh, take Kelly's going to take us through some exercises. So, um, let me stop the screen share so we can see better. Um, before we do that, we're going to do a little yeah, weight distribution test. So we can't take everybody's photos here right now, but something that you can do to kind of self-assess and get a little baseline, if you will, some data <laughs> um, to test. If you'd like to join in with this, uh, preferably do it without shoes on. Uh, socks are okay. Um, and if you can't take your, if you're at work or something, that's fine. But 
try to get down to it. Um, even if you're sitting, you can do this too. Even if you have, if you're sitting um, and you can't get up, it's you can you can do this test as well. Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're just looking. I want you to first kind of shake things out, march in place a little bit. Don't look at your feet. Just put them wherever you feel is natural for you. And then hold still. And you can even close your eyes if, if your balance is okay. You can close your eyes because we're just trying to feel what uh, what you're feeling in your feet. You know, specifically where is the pressure? Where is the weight? You know, does it feel like it's evenly distributed on both feet, or maybe it feels a little heavy on one side, it might feel like it's on the front of your foot more, maybe it's back on the on the heel. Is it the same on the outside or the inside? Or, um, you know, do you feel like there's a spot that has more pressure on it? So no right or wrong answers here, we're just looking for uh, clues. So anybody care to share what they feel right now? Yeah, and if you are sitting and you can't get up um, due to whatever circumstance, if you want to just sit to the kind of like the front of your chair, not leaning on the back, and then you can just put your feet flat on the floor and feel into the butt bones into your seat. Do you feel heavier on one side versus the other? Do you feel like you're leaning? You know what I mean? Those are ways to feel your weight distribution when you're sitting and say, oh, am I off? Am I off balance or am I in balance, right? Also paying attention to like, where do you put your feet on the ground when you sit? Do you put them out in front of you? Do you tuck them underneath you? Do you cross your legs? Those are also imbalances that your body is trying to adjust to. Yeah, so who cares to share what they're feeling in their feet right now? Lots of people. I feel, I feel a lot more on my right side. I've done this quite a bit and it seems like the right side just wants to take over. <laughs> Same, so more on the right. Anybody feel anything different? Inside edge of the feet, outside edge, heels, toes. Anybody feel like that guy going off the ski, off the ski jump, you know? <laughs> felt more on my right, but I'm having all kinds of issues right now. So <laughs> it's probably not fair. Well, take I, it easy. Take I've it been easy. seeing a chiropractor for a month and a half. So I'm I'm a mess. <laughs> well, you're we're yeah, grateful I'm a mess. You're, we're yeah. grateful you're here and you gotta start somewhere. And you know, today is your day to learn something new and get a new perspective and um, you know, start addressing this holistically and from a total full unit approach right and you get to be this is why we do these exercises like this because this is where you start to become the expert in your body so you get to feel the weight distribution you get to get in tune you get to look at your posture in the mirror and compare it to those posture photos we showed you earlier is your sternum and your belly button in line you know is your head over the center are your feet wide do your feet turn out are your hands how many fingers do you see like you're going to start to become your own expert and start to find the clues of about your body, right? Uh -huh. So that's why we're here today. Because we want you to be the expert. We believe you're the expert. <laughs> Please uh, just make a little mental note of what you feel on your feet now, and then we'll go through some exercises and we can check it again afterwards to see if you feel a change. But the reason we check the feet is that's just a basic an overview of, of what's going on in your posture, how you're standing is going to affect where the pressure is on your feet. So if we had perfect alignment, balanced, right and left should feel the same. It should be the same front to back, you know, on the balls and the heels evenly, uh, or, you know, the two feet should feel the same. So, um, but as you probably notice, um, most people don't feel like that, right? There's usually some, something that's different. So, um, so we're going to try to change that now with a few um, simple exercises, which, by the way, obviously, we all have different bodies here. We all have different problems. Some of us have pain, some don't. So these may not be the perfect exercises for everyone, and that's understandable. We're just trying to give some examples, something that you can experience. And then um, if you have any pain when you do any of these things, let us know. We can you know, give you some suggestions. So uh, don't do anything if it's, if it's hurting. But we're going to go through some examples right now. So um, yeah, Kelly. Okay, so the first exercise we're going to do is if you've got a, a, a door, like a flat door or a flat wall in your room or your house, I want you to go to that wall and I want you to stand with your back to that wall because that is going to give you a really good idea of your alignment, right? 
Now, if you can't put your feet all the way up to the wall, you maybe, you know, we've got a little cushion in the back there. Um, you might want to like give yourself a little inch or two just so that you feel like your feet are right directly underneath the middle of your pelvic girdle, right? And then you want to try and make sure your heels are touching, your butt's touching, the back of your shoulders and your head. Now, don't worry about your head. If your head doesn't touch, that's okay. That just means your shoulders are in fact rounded. Um, and you don't want to tip your head back and crunch your neck, right? You don't want to go into cervical um, compression. So just keep your head neutral. You want your chin and your forehead to be level. And then standing at the wall, you can assess your posture. Is one shoulder off? Is one hip off? Does it feel higher or lower? You know, can I get my feet straight, right? Can I get them hip width and parallel and straight six inches apart? Um, and then while you're here, we're just going to take some big deep breaths, belly breaths. And then we're going to imagine we have a, a rubber ball between our shoulder blades. And we're going to pinch that rubber ball and then release. Pinch that rubber ball and then release. Pinch and release. And you're gonna pinch the shoulder blades kind of down and together. I always say, like you're gonna put your shoulder blades into your back pockets. All the while you're still breathing and you're still keeping all your points touching the wall at the same time that you're squeezing those shoulder blades together and down. Yeah, it's really easy. You'll probably notice when you squeeze your shoulder blades back, most people will want to shrug them up and tense up towards your ears, right? Which is which is not what we want. So pulling them down and back is is what we're looking for here. And just your arms will should just be relaxed at your side. So. Noodle arms and then shoulders away from your ears. No shoulders for earrings. Do that about and 30 times. If you have pel a pelvis or hips that were in front of the gravity line, in front of the white line, well, guess what? The wall is now your template. It's now your straight line. So now your hips are underneath your shoulders. It's creating a nice curve for your spine. Some of you might begin kind of tired in your legs as you're standing there longer and longer because you haven't been standing in alignment for like this for quite some time. So when we put you in alignment, the body starts using all the right muscles to, to do all the right things, right? Okay, so then the second exercise, we're going to still use the wall, but we're gonna stand sideways to the wall. And I do want you to use the wall as a prop, okay? You wanna put one foot in front of the other. Imagine you're on a tightrope and you're gonna keep your hips square, your shoulders square, and your feet on a straight line. And then you can use that wall to help balance you, as long as it doesn't hurt your shoulder. If it does, hold on to something in front of you like this, or something to the side like that, okay? On that straight line, pelvis square, shoulder square, equal weight, front leg to back leg. And then you're gonna squeeze and release your butt muscles. Now. We had that little rubber ball between our shoulder blades earlier. We're going to move it down and put it between the cheeks, and then we're going to squeeze and release that little rubber ball there, right? I always say, crack the walnut. Keeping that weight equal, front and back leg, keeping the torso square to the wall in front of you. You might notice when you're doing this that one, you might feel like one glute, one butt cheek is engaging more than the other. Uh, they should both be working though, right? So just kind of take note of that and try to get them to both turn on at the same time. Squeeze for a second, release for a second. Just repeat. I'm having some lighting issues here. My light bulbs keep flickering, so. And then, yeah, we're gonna switch gonna them. Take the other leg and take a step and put the other leg in front. And again, set yourself up, look down. Are you on the tightrope? Make sure that your toes aren't sticking out one side or your heels out the other, right? And that your hips aren't twisted or turned or your shoulders. Keep everything square, equal weight, both feet. And then again, crack that walnut, squeeze those cheeks equally. And there might be a difference right side versus left side. I know for me on this side, oh, I can feel both sides working really well when I had my other foot in front. I had to think about it more. There was an imbalance there. I could sense that. I could feel that. And 
when we're doing these exercises, that's what you're looking for, those clues into your body. What side is doing less and not working the same? How can I get it to do the same? How can I create a mirror image, a balance in the body when I'm doing the exercises? That's the goal, is to get the exercises more and more balanced every time you do them. And that's gonna create balance in your body and in your posture and help you get more functional. Okay, then our last exercise is sitting in the chair. And you're gonna need like a little pillow, maybe a bed pillow or a couch pillow, preferably something that's not too squishy. If it's too squishy, just fold it in half. These are the nice Agassi pillows. They're six inches wide, right? But if you have a yoga block, just turn it on its side to the six inch side and you can put that between your feet. I tip myself down a little bit. There we go. Um, you can put that little yoga block between your feet and then your knees. And then I wanna show you a really good sitting posture. So when you're sitting, you wanna make sure the ankle bone is directly under the knee bone. The knee and the hip are 90 degrees, right? Shoulders are above the hips. You're gonna roll your pelvis forward. You're gonna, I always say, lay your belly button out and down onto your thighs. Think about it that way. Put that little arch into your low back. When you do that, pay attention to what happens to your shoulders. Just by putting that little arch, your shoulders actually relax and go down your spine and together right where they should be. So it's a really good indicator that when you have your pelvis balanced and a nice curve into your spine right where you should be, your shoulders actually naturally stay right where they are supposed to be. Once you're in this position, which is called sitting in extension, then you're going to squeeze and release that pillow. Squeeze and release that pillow. Hold it for one 1,000 and then let it go. Hold it for one 1,000, let it go. And you're gonna do that 30 to 60 times. Try to balance it out, right versus left. Make sure both sides are squeezing equally. You're gonna feel those inner thighs. You might feel some thigh muscles or some hip flexor muscles. Let those arms just relax at your side. Keep that arm to your back. Some of you might be wondering, well, why are we doing this exercise? I thought this was for shoulder pain. <laughs> well, going back to the posture and what we're, uh, you know, typically people's posture that have shoulder pain, you know, there's some issue in the hips, um, whether they're forward or maybe uh, the curve of the spine isn't ideal. So this exercise helps get those pelvic muscles working a little better, gets you balanced right to left a little better. And as Kelly mentioned, it straightens out the spine so that the shoulders can rest more where they're supposed to. So um so it's all connected okay just a hundred more and we'll all be perfect and ready to go yeah. just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> okay now let's put that down and stand up or if you're still sitting in your chair that's okay too because you might feel a little difference in your weight distribution there only if you just did the knee pose basically so let's stand up and let's pay attention to the weight distribution in our feet and let's maybe pay attention to like if you have a mirror in your in your house look in see what might have changed right did the weight distribution change did your feet position change did your shoulder position change it feels something different who notices something different now than 10 minutes ago anybody yeah. care to share <laughs> i like, definitely feel more aligned more balanced. Me too. Your shoulders feel better. <laughs> Your shoulders feel better? Yeah, they feel a little more relaxed. Oh, great. You know, when your pelvis is underneath your spine and your shoulder girdle, like the foundation that it's supposed to be, their shoulders go, oh, thank God. I can let go. <laughs> because, I'm always like this. <laughs> yeah, because I have a short neck, anyways. <laughs> your uh, your your pelvis and you know can do the work to hold you hold those shoulders up, so the shoulders don't have to do all that work anymore. Uh, Laura said, "More grounded in her feet." Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you can just give a thumbs up too if you don't want to say or hop on you can just say thumbs up i feel something different yeah and if you don't that's also okay you know like i said that maybe 
your body needed something different. And that's where, um, you know, it's egoscue is really an individualized approach. So it's not a one size fits all. So that's don't want you to think that, oh, that didn't really feel like it did anything. Therefore, I'm beyond I can't it. Be <laughs> right. I'm helpless. I'm helpless. Yeah, no, 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 no. It just means you need something more specific and tailored to you. Maybe you need something harder too. Sometimes we need something a little harder. The easy ones don't always kick it into gear. So, or sometimes we need something easier. Um, nope. So, now Zach, I have to run because um, I have another meeting here at one o'clock. So I'm gonna leave the last part up to you. Um, but I'm so grateful that I got to be with all of you today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. And know that I am always here for questions or help or anything that you might need. Zach's going to give you our information here at the end of this. And I hope to see and help some of you in the near future here. So take care and have a great week. Keep moving, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. So we're, we're wrapping up here too, but um, just wanted to talk about what the next steps are. You know, hopefully you've learned something today. Um, and um, so there's basically, you know, a few different options of what you can do next. Hopefully you do something and um, <laughs> I guess you could do nothing with this information, but uh, one option is uh, the pain-free book. So many, maybe some of you have already uh, heard of that or read that, but it's a great option if you're still skeptical or, you know, you're just maybe first learning about this and you want to learn more and, you know, the founder of the method, Pete Egoscu, that's where the name comes from, by the way. Um, he wrote several books, but uh, pain-free is probably the one to start with. Um, and you can get it, you know, for 15 bucks on Amazon or at your local library. But it covers the whole body. There's a chapter for each body part, including shoulders. And so it's nice and easy to use. You just go to the chapter that's related uh, or relevant to you. And uh, there's some exercises you can try there. Granted, it's a book. It's not going to be personalized necessarily, but many people have, have you know, used it to, to get out of pain. And so it's a great resource and, you know, also just good to learn more about the method and the why and the how, how it works, you know. So um, the other option is if you're uh, maybe have some more questions or you're interested in this and you want to, um, but you're not quite sure, you know, what to do next. Um, um, Kelly and I are both happy to meet with you um, to kind of help you figure out what's going on in your body by we'll do a free posture evaluation so we can take your photos and um, and look at them just like we did with the examples a few minutes ago and help you understand what's going on and why you might have shoulder pain or, or any other pain for that matter um, and just kind of helping you relate it to your body and then talking about what we can do next. So that's that's something we're offering for free for you guys. Um, it's like a 20 to 30 minute uh, conversation, either in person or on Zoom, just like this. We can do it just, just as well either way. Um, if you're remote, then you can we can have you take some pictures ahead of time. We'll give you instructions on how to do that. You email them to us and then we can look at them together or we can just look at you, you know, like this on Zoom um, either way. So so that's an option. And then final option, of course, is if you some, this is something that, you know, you think makes sense and you're really um, excited to see the same results that some of these other clients have had, then uh, we'd be happy to partner with you and, and be your posture coach, if you will, uh, working with you one on one. And so we have um, I put up the our prices here for our typical um, program. We have either 16 or eight session packages that we do. Um, and uh, as a thank you for attending today, you, you can get a 10% discount off our normal price too. So um, the sessions are typically done once a week, at least in the beginning. Um, and then usually once you're feeling better, you know, your posture is improved, your, your symptoms are, are, are better, um, you know, then we start to meet a little less often because eventually the goal is to have you be independent, right? We don't want you coming to us forever. We just want to teach you the things you want to need to know, help you create good habits, you know, make sure the exercises are working well for you and they'll change over time too. So there's no one set of exercise that's going to be perfect all the time, right? Um, your body's going to change, your posture is going to change, your symptoms are going to change. 
the exercises have to change too to, to match you where you're at. So, um, so that's, uh, that's kind of the, how the basics of how the program works. Um, and it's the same cost if you're coming into the clinic or if you're doing it on Zoom, since you know it's the same process. We, we don't need to physically touch you as long as we can see each other. It works, it works really well. So let's see. And then I've got our contact info here. So you can also just go to the website, goscu.com and find, find a therapist near you, but um, that's our contact info. So that's about it for, from what I had prepared. So this is uh, your chance to ask any questions if anything that hasn't been answered yet. Um, anybody have any other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Cindy. Um, I have the book. Well, I bought two books. I'll probably give the one for the women to my daughter. But I've been doing the static back, the frog, and then where you're on your static back and you have the pillow between your knees. Okay. That one. So, but like I said, I am a mess. <laughs> I, um, a lot of there's some stuff in the book for sciatic and piriformis. Um, which book do you have? Pain free. Pain free. Uh -huh. uh, is it the the new edition, like the one with the yellow cover? Or... Uh, on the there, there's a second edition that just came out last year, I think. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. So that's the new one. Perfect. Yeah, there's. A, I don't think there's one specific for piriformis or sciatica per se. Your best bet is probably the low back chapter. There's one for herniated discs, which could, you know, that's um, could be a cause of sciatica. But um, so I mean, I would probably start there. But once again, it's you know the best result is going to be giving you a personalized routine that takes whole body and all you know all the stuff into consideration um based on your posture so um you know getting that posture eval you would be helpful but um but just working with the book i would say um yeah probably the low back chapter so you're in uh well you're in seattle but she's in she in beaverton yeah okay yeah where, where, where do you live I'm in Winston or Roseburg, Winston area. I live really close to Jim and Paula Haas Sutter and um, they go up to the Beaverton clinic. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, and Zoom is like, you know, you're experiencing here, it works just as well. So you don't, if getting there in person is a hard, hard for you, then uh, I'd, you know, encourage you to try the Zoom option. It works really well, so. Uh, it's the driving part. I just can't sit. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, especially with sciatica, that's not fun. So, um, horrid. <laughs> what about uh, the issue of scoliosis? Is that also covered in this? Yeah, scoliosis is. Um, I mean, we see people all the time with varying degrees of that. You know, where it's the kind of a sideways curve of your spine, basically, or right. twisting. Um, so. I mean, just like the rest of the posture, your your joints, including your spine, or their position is controlled by muscles and muscle tension. So we can change that um, depending on how severe it is. You know, if it's like um, there's kind of what we call functional scoliosis, um, uh, which is basically there's nothing wrong with the bones. It's just the position. Like if I just twist my spine and stand like this, like that, I just created scoliosis. It's not permanent, of course, mm -hmm. right? But so, so a lot of people will have what we call functional scoliosis, just meaning, you know, their muscles are out of balance and it's putting their spine in the abnormal curve. And that's, you know, relatively easy to, to correct. Now, if it's more the type of scoliosis that most people develop, like when they're children and the spine is kind of has an abnormal shape, then, you know, as an adult, you're probably not going to be able to completely fix that. Um, but the good news is you don't have to. I mean, many people live with scoliosis and don't even know it, you know, because it doesn't cause them any pain. Um, so we just, but we can work on, you know, at getting the spine in as good of a position as we can and also getting those other eight load bearing joints, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles to be lined up as best we can. And that's going to, you know, take stress off of the back and, and, you know, allow you to function better, even if the spine is still, you know, kind of crooked. 
So there's definitely hope. I mean, I work with people with scoliosis all the time and um, I don't see it as a, as a barrier really. Thanks. Yep. Any other questions? Well, we, um, if we're going to get the 10% off, we have to do it today. Is that what that said? Uh, um, not today. You, we give you a week <laughs> to think. Oh, okay. Just let us know as soon as you can. And you don't have to actually come in in the next week. Let, at least get on the schedule. You know, let us know you want to take advantage of that. And we'll, we'll get you in as soon as we can. But um, yeah. I can say that it has helped me. I felt better after I did it. Yes, please. Well, Zach, I'd like to uh, jump in here and say thank you for the reminder. I went through uh, your your program many years ago uh, in in Portland, and uh, I was uh, really really hurting. And and uh, you absolutely made wonders for me, even though I had to cut the procedures short. Uh, my wife was coming down with uh, dementia at the time, and I was working full time, and uh, uh, just driving to Portland was a was a real stretch for me. So I uh, kept doing them for a while with all the equipment that I'd, I'd purchased, plus the book and all that. And, and then just one day I just quit doing them. And I'm, I'm, uh, I think that's gonna be my first thing is I'm gonna get my book back out and I'm gonna get back to know, doing what I, I know helps me. And instead of, and I, go, I go to an osteopath all the time and, and my, uh, Girlfriend and I are both massage therapists, so we work on each other all the time. But uh, anyway, so uh, it, it, this is just a thank you from from way back, and and uh, thanks for today and reminding me. Oh, great! Well, I'm glad glad you're kind of getting back on track. It sounds like so that's that's good. That, that's the nice thing about Egoscue too is it's these things are things that you'll learn and you'll be able to practice. You know, hopefully for the rest of your life or you know whenever you need it. So. Um, sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, let me know if uh, if you need any any other help uh, getting back into it. So, okay, great, thank you. Okay, let's see any notes in the chat. <clears throat> okay, well, feel free to reach out. To, you know, if you want to reach out individually, that's also totally fine. You can email or call. Um, Hopefully we'll be seeing you guys soon for your either just for questions or your posture assessment or if you're ready to get started, um, just let me know. Oh, awesome. Right. Thanks for your participation, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.